All right, welcome to Downtime Podcast Live, episode two. If you're a regular to the podcast, then you'll recognise my voice. Now you get to see my face, you lucky things. Um, if you haven't listened to the audio version of the podcast before, then you should. There's uh, over 100 episodes with some of the top people from the world of downhill and enduro mountain biking, all available for you to listen to now and keep yourselves busy over these lockdown days. All you need to do is head to downtimepodcast.com and you can check that out over there. While you're here this evening, uh, make sure you subscribe on our YouTube channel so you can get all of these uh, Downtime Live episodes as they go out. There's hopefully going to be some more of these coming along, so if you're enjoying them, let us know. We'll do more. Um, if you are watching live this evening, then don't forget to bring your questions uh, for tonight's guests. Put them in the comments, and we'll do our best to answer as many of those as we can. Uh, yeah, so let's get on with it. Let's welcome... Uh, this week's guest to the show, uh, we've got one of the top enduro riders in the world joining us today, and uh, it's the wonderful Katie Winton. Katie, how's it going? Hello, everybody. All good. How are you? <laughs> I'm very well, thank you. How, uh, how are you feeling about doing this uh, first ever live podcast? Very weird. Very weird. Because I, I can, it's kind of like normal, because we're just chatting, but everybody's actually listening now. Yeah. So I've got to watch what I say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've got to be on our best behaviour. All right, well, let's um, let's start with some, I guess, an obvious topic, a little bit of COVID banter. Um, well, well, actually, where are you first? Because you're not in the UK. No, I'm in New Zealand. So this is uh, 7.31 in the morning. Yes, and, uh, sorry about that. <laughs> that's absolutely fine. That's absolutely fine. It's a beautiful day and uh, we're just hanging out like everybody else, really. <laughs> yeah, how you've been over there quite a while, yeah? Yeah, I came out on the 6th of December. I went back to Europe briefly and then I was supposed to go to the first EWS in, on the 20th of March and then lockdown shut everything down. Well, the races got cancelled and then we got locked down. Yeah, yeah what, and what does lockdown involve for you guys over there? Um, at the moment, we just go and only go to the supermarket and everything else is shut. You know, pharmacies are open. And we can still go outside and do exercise and stuff. So every man and their dog, many, many dogs, <laughs> dogs around the world are rejoicing right now. They are all out and about just exercising and stuff. So okay. my flatmates are working from home. I've got a flatmate that works in the hospital. He's um, helping with the cleaning and stuff. And yeah, but personally, my life's not really changed too much. I just do my training, eat food do other bits and pieces and that's it so yeah, just no yeah just no racing i guess for now yeah yeah. yeah 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 it just yeah. feels like i'm heading into another off season really at the moment strange yeah so you, like you said you had a brief trip over to europe was that for for team camp yeah so we had team camp and test camp shooting with a uh, shram which was amazing is that so, is that the first time you've ever done uh, an actual suspension tuning camp yeah, yeah, it is. We've done a bit. We did a bit with SRAM. They came to our actual team camp last year, and um, but this was the most thorough testing I've done. So, yeah, it was actually absolutely awesome. Like SRAM just blew everything out of the water and had us all sorted. You know, they, their massive pit zone. They had a, a shuttle route that ended just right beside the tent. You could just do laps all day and just work with the guys that know best and yeah it was absolutely amazing nice had food they just gave us lunch every day it was amazing Perfect. amazing catering did, so yeah did, did very you, looked after did you learn quite a bit about how to get your bike set up then having that support um more just getting it set really really well because they could do stuff you know they could tune it on site you know they had all the technicians there and um, tim flukes and everything people that are just absolutely dialed so any little changes we we could make or you know other options were actually available to us so we could do that which was amazing so um yeah and i worked with keaton and we just just it's just fine tuning because i've been on the fork for um since 2018 yeah so it's just kind of just fine tuning and you know we had the new debonair air spring um, in the fork so we um got used to that basically, which is really cool. It was, the, the track, by the way, as well, was the roughest thing I have ever ridden in my life. I was like, wow, if you if the suspension feels good down here, <laughs> then 
<laughs> it's going to feel good anywhere. <laughs> so, no, it was good. That was a really good camp. Yeah. Was the bike feeling quite a lot faster by the end of it? Yeah, it was hard because that track was so rough. It was like, okay, I, you know, once we were done on that track, it was like, I actually need to go and ride this somewhere else to make sure that this still feels right. You know, it's, the settings I've got are, can transfer everywhere, basically, and I can make the adjustments I need to a point. You know, there's a couple of clicks here and there, but it was mint. So, yeah, I felt pretty good by the end. The Debonair, that new air spring, changed the fork quite a bit so it was hard to know whether it felt good you know whether it was better or not because it was you know you were just like mm, this is quite different so i need to go and ride it more places to just confirm that this is actually a lot better which it is <laughs> <laughs> i actually can't believe it you know that is a good thing so much mm, yeah yeah and, and a bit of a bit of a change to the team this season you've got a few new members joining you how uh, how does that all feel yeah, well, it was great. We had a nice little team camp, and then it's just like, oh, well, that's <laughs> when are we going to see each other again? So, no, it's good. Florian's awesome. He's just an absolute jokester, so we just have a lot of fun. Him and uh, Pedro have full on got a bromance. Nice. And um, Hattie's, Hattie's just an absolute solid, solid human. She's so nice and just incredible skills, but has no idea, you know, <laughs> like no idea that she's so skilled, is what I mean, so, you know, it's very exciting to have a, a youngster that's so good coming up, and she's a tank as well, because she's just done all the XC and cyclocross stuff, so I'm really excited for her to see how well she can go once we actually get to race, so nice. very exciting. And you, you yeah, had some good. off the bike fun as well, so climbing and pizza mm. making and all sorts. Yeah, and Pietro Lagura, they uh, sorted us out with some climbing and then we had lunch and then we went for a wee bike ride and they showed us some of the new trails because you got Finale Ligure but then Pietra's like the next town over and in that valley they've got heaps of trails there as well and they're doing a lot of development for um, like e-bikes and stuff but also they do shuttles and they've got like a thousand meter drop from the, the hill all the way down straight back to you know like the accommodation and all that so um, they took us in and showed us what they were up to and we had pizza and made pizza with like the master pizza man and they had these like little bits of like dough that they'd like put in a grill like just oily grill thing and they came out and you know just terrible but delicious <laughs> oh my god because we'd been quite a busy day and they just put these down in front of us and we were just like take a bit and then we were all just like oh my god we need more of those just going over to smash heaps of them so yeah, yeah, we had a good time. Just yeah. that it was like really weird because before that, I was a bit like t saying to the team like, "Oh, you know, coronavirus is happening." Um, I'm not, and I had to go through Singapore, and I was like, yeah, you know, it's like it was right over Chinese New Year, and I was like, "Oh no, you know, I don't really want this coronavirus, and if I do, you just need to know that this is a risk that I might get ill, and I might be out, and it might sort of hinder my first two races." So. We were like, all right, all right, okay, cool. Went over to Italy. Everything's still kind of like, oh, Corona, maybe whatever this thing is. And then you come back, and it's just all just gone boom like that. Absolutely insane. It was nice to get a little bit of Italy before before all of this. Yeah, definitely. And you've got um, you've got Tracy Mosley looking after the crew as well. How mm. how does that work? Is it like having a nice team mum? Oh, Tracy is just absolutely amazing. <laughs> She's just amazing. She's like, she sorts all us athletes out, you know, does all the logistics and things. And because she has been an, a racer and an athlete herself, she knows. She just gets it. So she can, um, she sorts everything out for us. And, and it's basically our point of call to Trek kind of thing. So she's like, it's like us, Tracy, and then the corporate sort of body. So, you know, she can voice our, our needs or wants or whatever and equally the other way as well so she's a good little buffer between us all which is really good excellent well let's uh, let's take some questions if people are watching live now stick your questions mm. in the comments bit to the side and we'll try and get to those we had a few that came in on social media as well so let's start with a nice easy one from ocean and sunshine are you glad you stayed in new zealand during the pandemic Yes, I am, because our trails are still open, so I can still do my job. <laughs> well, you in Christchurch? Yeah, I'm in Christchurch. Yeah. What are the trails like around there? Is it pretty good? 
Yeah, they are good. They they obviously had the bike park, but that's shut at the moment. Um, and then they've got this Victoria Park, which is just... Um, it kind of reminds me of the bottom of Inner Leithen, if anybody's ever been there, just like an absolute... Um, just trails going everywhere, you know. Absolutely everywhere, crossing over. And it take, I still haven't really figured out an absolute... Like a good way down. <laughs> There's just so many different options. But it's like concrete the ground is like concrete and it's I don't know whether it's like clay or something but it's so hard and then when it gets wet you're just not allowed to ride because you'll just destroy the trails but also it is like ice so yeah that's what we're that's what we've got which is pretty mint yeah no complaints here yeah all right we've Mm. got a question in from shred easy what's your favorite part about the time you've spent in Christchurch oh favorite part probably it's kind of everything because it ticks all my boxes. We've got a good gym, um, the supermarkets, right? You know, you're in the city, so you put everything you need right, right there, so not far away. You don't need to waste time. You know, for me at home, I've got to drive an hour to get to the city for whatever I need. Um, and then I'm right at the base of the hills, so I can just go straight up into the hills. I can, um, you know, ride, ride into the hills, run into the hills. The weather is good. It is summer when it's winter at home. Like it's it's that whole thing. The bike park's amazing. There's a chairlift right there. Like, yep, yeah, I am a big fan. <laughs> nice. All right. Another New Zealand based question then from Beth Wilkins. Uh, they're hoping to go uh, and ride in New Zealand in December. Where mm-hmm. would you recommend riding that isn't a bike park? That isn't a bike park. Um, Craigieburn, definitely. So that's not far from here. It's like an hour and a half drive. You just drive across the Canterbury Plains, which are flat, and it turns into the big Southern Alps, and it's just in there. That's amazing. Um, I haven't ridden there, but Alexandra, people keep going on about being amazing. So um, definitely check that spot out. And Rotorua, I don't know if it's really a bike park or not. It's kind of like a trail centre, but... I don't care. You just have to ride there. <laughs> right. You definitely have to ride there. So yeah, Scott, loads of good spots. Scott Rui, I'm guessing, is a is a Christchurch local. What's your favourite burger from Bacon Brothers? Does that make sense to you? Oh, Bacon Brothers. Well, the problem is, is that I like burger fuel. So <laughs> <laughs> I can't I can't tell you because I I don't know, but I can tell you. That my favourite burger from um, Burger Fuel is the Bastard Burger. Sorry, people, but that's actually just what it's called. <laughs> What's in it? Um. Oh well, you've got the beef patty, then you've got um like beetroot, and then you've got mango, and then um aioli, and then I don't have tomato or onion, but uh and then lettuce in a bun, and it's whoa. Wow. That sounds pretty good. Yeah, it's really good. I'm moving. <laughs> cool. Here's yeah. another one that came in on the social media. Kate 23 cycles. How many bikes do you have? Mm, that's a good question. One, two, three, four, five, five. Five bikes. God. Yeah. Well, this so this ties into a um, question from Magnus. Let's just find that mm-hmm. one. So he's asking, what kind, different types of bikes do you ride? And what do you feel they contribute to your racing? Um, well, I've got a road bike, and I like that just for easy spins when I'm not getting, you know, because I get rattled all the time on the mountain bike. So when you can go on the road bike and you just don't get rattled and just, you know, you can just lay down the power and go fast. So I've got that even for some longer rides. I've got a jump bike that I just got, and that's mint for pumping all my practicing all my pumping skills and things. and. Then I've got downhill bike, which is yet to be used because <laughs> I keep not being at home. Um, and then my, and that'll be good just because I want to try and do a little bit of downhill in the future. But also just, I feel like you can just smash things a bit harder when you've got that much more travel. Um, and then I've just got my enduro bike, which is good for my job, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I can race that. Awesome. Yeah, let's talk a bit about that. There was a few questions that came in around that. So Joe Loran is asking, can you talk us through the process of getting used to 29-inch wheels, in particular stem, bars, fork pressure, or anything to get over the back of the bike? So that's a big question. But talk us through a little bit about 
yeah, how you got on when you first got onto that 29er and, and how you adjusted to it. Yeah, that was, that was a nice little interesting story there for me in my little slash. It was in 2016. Uh, not to, was it? Yeah, I think it was. And I rode it for the first time in the August in Whistler. And I was riding it around. And I didn't want to race it because it was too kind of soon. And I was like, oh, yeah, see how this goes. And then when I was at home, I went bef- between the remedy and the slash just to test. I was like, right, okay, I need to see. And I was going to do all this time and testing. And I was like, actually, do you know what? It's going to be the bike that makes me feel the best, you know, that makes me feel confident because it doesn't matter if the one that makes me, like, I don't feel that good on is faster because I'll just not ride it as well because it won't feel as good. So anyway, rode down this track on the, the 27.5 and then got on the slash and it was this corner and I was coming down and I was like, like that. And then you know, I'm fighting the 27, and when I came in on the 29, I just came in, boof, like that, and it just went up high and dropped in, and I was just like, okay, that's the bike, because I can just hit all the lines, you know, that I want to and need need to, really. But the the thing for me was, in I didn't get on with the Remedy 29 that Trek had. Like, that, that 29er just didn't work for me, which made me understand that actually you need to try different 29ers that are that will work for you because the geometry on the slash works a lot better for me because I'm like right in the bike you know I'm not I'm not just perched on top of it so I can use my body to move it around and it just took a while of learning how to open up corners and stuff you know that was kind of the biggest distant difference and just letting it carry speed and if you can keep it carrying speed it just pulls you down that hill and um, I think in terms of stem and bar nothing really changed for me with that um i put the i've got a spacer under my stem at the moment and i'm actually now running a 170 fork as well so that's changed things a little bit too yeah i think for me definitely the longer bikes work really well with the 29 because i'm i'm quite small as well and that kind of being between the wheels rather than having to get off the back of the bike or think about weighting it seems to make quite a lot of difference you don't yeah the, the, that modern geometry you kind of ride more in the middle of the bike so yeah yeah, yeah for sure and it, like we changed part of the reason that i wanted to change the 170 was to push me more central on the bike because i felt like i was kind of quite over the front just with the weight the way the weight had me you know just the central point of the bike was quite far forward so by putting that 170 fork on it just brought me back just a little bit so i could sit up more you know, just be the center position was now more central. You see what I mean? So, yeah, that made a big difference too. Yeah. Cool. We had a good question from uh, Glob Coppard. Said 29 is not disputing that they're faster, but as a smaller stature rider, are they still fun? Do you ever think when you're bombing down an EWS stage, I wish I was on something a bit more lively and nimble? Well, see, now this depends on your your perception of fun <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> and I like absolutely bombing down hills and if you're bombing down hills you need something pretty stable especially in straight lines you know I just love straight line bombing and um, so yeah I think I think it'd be nice to try 27.5 again just to have a play around and see but definitely for racing and going fast I love the 29er like it gives me the confidence and I can go fast on it so you know when I've got the confidence to hit the lines that I want, then that's fun to me because I'm going down the hill in the fastest way I possibly can. Yeah. John O'Core asked, "Do you have? How do you have your minnow link set? And do you ever change it around?" Assuming that's a Trek thing, because I don't know what that means. Yeah, yeah. So it changes. You can change the rear end geometry bit to make it slacker or steeper. And I actually in 2017 my first year race in the slash I did change it a couple of times but actually found that um just leaving in the slack was where I wanted it everywhere anyway so yeah and I just I like to just get used to a bike so I just left it in that and yeah I don't change it okay anymore. all right we've got a few that this one's taking us right back to the start go, go on give us a bit of background Kirsty Woodley wants to know how did you get into biking Oh, my dad. <laughs> my dad um, used to take me and my brother out biking 
um, as our weekend activity to give mum some peace. And uh, we would usually go in the depths of winter when it was snowing and we would still go out biking. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, it was just like an SAS, are you tough enough? We'd come back and mum would be like, you went out and what? <laughs> and we'd be like, yeah, and we got cake and hot chocolate at the end. So yeah. That was how we how it all began, really. Yeah, and he's still riding and uh, smashing it out. Did Trans Provence oh, with yeah. you last last summer? Yes, yes, he did, and he was going to be doing the Transcontinental for a third time this year, but it's been cancelled with all of, all the chaos. But um, yeah, my dad's a bit of a absolute beast. I tell you another funny thing that he used to do with us as kids. So he'd teach us teach us skills, you know, because he was really into the biking, and uh, he would, was teaching us how to ride down steep hills. And so he had figured out all these different steep hills. And so it was like grassy bank, okay, control your, you know, use your brakes, don't skid, control your speed down. And they just gradually got steeper and steeper and longer and longer till the point it was like this really very steep bank and roots and everything. And then at the bottom there was a, a stream. So if you didn't make it, you would be in the stream. <laughs> so <laughs> luckily we both made it, but it was his dad just absolutely loved it. So he would just take us everywhere. <laughs> awesome no messing we've got um a few things coming in about riding skills actually so we'll pick up on some of those mm. jesse may morgan wants to know what slow speed skills have helped your riding hi jesse i know jesse okay um slow speed skills i'd probably say you know pumping learning how to weight and unweight the bike because I feel like I've figured out that that's predominantly mostly what you're doing everywhere. So you're, you're waiting and then you're unweighting over something. The same in a corner, you're waiting and then you're unweighting. So understanding that pump and so then learning to bunny hop with that and flow with the bike. I think those that's been really helpful, understanding that process because then you can apply it pretty much everywhere. You know, you can apply that to jumps, you can apply that to roots, you can apply that, you know, everywhere. So that's good. Wheelies and manuals, also good just to understand how to get the front wheel up. But I hold my hands up and say, I definitely need to practice them more. So, <laughs> so you're not following the girl on girls 14 day wheelie challenge then? No, I haven't. I haven't got on that yet. <laughs> I, I, I'm watching them and I'm like, you need to get on this, Winton. Come on, come on. <laughs> got to be done. I've got plenty of time. Really well. Yeah, I do, I do, I do. Yeah, it's good. There's quite a few people doing it and everyone seems to be progressing. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it's great. It's, it's amazing what you can do with just a bit of consistency and practice. So I just need to do it. <laughs> yeah, all right. Another one, Sticks, Spokes and Ropes uh, asks, what are your favourite drills or what do you think are the most underrated simple skills that most bikers could work on? And I'm guessing maybe the pumping thing is, is a big part of that. Yeah, definitely. Understanding that. Um standing up a lot of sort of real beginners just don't stand up you just need to stand up but looking ahead makes a huge difference you know if you're looking right at your front wheel you're not got you've not got time to react and stuff like that so you can just practice a looking a good chunk ahead of you to allow yourself some time to process what's coming towards you you've got more time to plan so you can set up better and just be a bit smart about where you're going so you're not just like oh no now i'm in this and then now i'm in that and da, 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 da. so yeah looking ahead yeah and just feeling your bike and understanding that because you can you can get you can read all the stuff you want but you you need to feel that as well to understand. Like I remember I was doing a little bit of coaching with some kids and there was a girl who went down the slope and she'd obviously been told, put your weight back when you're slowing down. And she was slowing down, she just went straight back. And I was like, you're not, there's not a feeling going on here. So under, getting used to your bike and feeling your bike and what it's doing in different situations. So you can be doing this now, just rolling down a fire road and going over, or going over a speed bump and just not doing anything, but just feeling what the bike's doing and getting used to moving it and filling that space that you've got because you've got all these arms out here and you can fill that and you've got your legs and you can get all the way down and just realising how much room you've got on your bike that you can use to work into the terrain or absorb the terrain as well. So, yeah, there's loads. <laughs> all right, good answer. Let's pick up those a few, uh, a few lighter questions. So, Lila's Life with Bikes. Do you know this person? It said, are you Possibly. ever coming back to Scotland? 
Yeah, it's a good question. I don't know what's going to happen, you know, guys. <laughs> <laughs> you might be stuck in New Zealand for quite a while. I might be stuck in New Zealand. I know that my visa is currently being extended until September because of this epidemic. Okay. So we'll just kind of wait and see how it goes and how it pans out. I'll, f- I'll for sure be back at some point. I'm not going forever. But well, yeah, just to see how this goes. Flying Flow 21 wants to know if you miss him. Flying Flow, do we all know? Do we all know Flying Flow? I think <laughs> that's Nicola. your new teammate, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I miss Flow. <laughs> miss the whole team. I bet it must it's be amazing. it must be really strange, especially when you spend normally you spend a lot of the year with them, right? Yeah, 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 you do. I mean we hadn't spent that much time together, but yeah. We were all geared up to go, really, and it was such a nice team because we've got um, Eli Woody and Andy Lund who are um, doing our mechanics, them are our mechanics, and they're so nice and so chill, and then we've got Flo, we've got Pedro, and they're just bros, and like me and Hattie, and it was just good, it was, and James Brickle as well, he does all our food and massage and everything, just he's more the team mum because he's hands-on there being team mum, and it was just such a nice crew and I was like wow this is you know it makes such a big difference when you're at a race and you've got everybody's getting along we all go good and it's like oh everything was in place we we're all ready it's like eh, no it'll, it'll come back yeah. around you, yeah. you need to get Andy Lund to take you on his local trails they are quite special oh excellent I'd have just been watching his Instagram of him just digging away yeah. <laughs> he's, he's been all. busy they're honestly yeah. they're they're very special yeah Definitely, definitely worth a trip. Sweet. All right, we've got we've got some um, nutrition-based questions. So, Fleurin Durest, we'd love to know what you eat before and whilst racing. Um, before a race, I eat um rice with eggs in it, through it, you know, and then a bit of avocado, and it's just the same thing pretty much when I'm racing. It's like um rice, it's like sushi rice with uh, bacon and eggs in it and then I usually have something a little bit more tasty like a gel or something if I'm real needing something and um, yeah and that's it I'm just trying to have one of them after every single stage that's that's the hardest part is actually just eating you finish the stage you can't breathe and you're just like oh and you're like you need to eat and you're like I do not want to eat anything so yeah not not easy John uh, Lauren is asking, since last time it was interesting to hear you talk about your diet and learning which foods give you energy, etc. Have you learned anything more on that? Are you still playing around with diet or are you, are you kind of fairly set now? Kind of fairly set now. Everything seems to be pretty good. I've taken dairy out pretty much completely. Um, and yeah, everything else seems to be good. My stomach's been the best it's been for a very long time so yeah no complaints at the moment all right juan fernando vasquez i hope i've pronounced that right wants to know how you're training in quarantine are, are the gyms shut where you are yeah so our gyms are shut but basically i can do i can still do everything because we've got we managed to get a, like a we've got a bag that we filled with weights and then we've got a couple of dumbbells and then we managed to get some band things they're not like they're like weird rope band things pull them and stuff um so we've got enough there and i've got skipping rope and actually i've got behind what you can't see we've actually got some thing that's like a pull-up bar so i've pretty much got everything i need and we've not got restrictions on how many times we can go out so i can do multiple sessions in a day if, when i need to and yeah as i say i can just my, the hill's right there so i can just ride straight up i can run straight up so yeah, I'm in a very fortunate position to still be able to just crack on as normal. So I'm kind of making the most of it while I can in case they do shut us down some more. But at the moment, New Zealand's numbers are pretty low. So hopefully it's they don't need to shut us down any more than they have. Yeah, I'm not I'm not fully up to speed, but I, I read somewhere today that they thought New Zealand might have peaked in its cases, which is good news if it has. So. Well, that's great, yeah, because we were... Low. Yeah, because we had like 80, 80, 90 for a couple of days and now it's like down to like 20 a day, really. So yeah. that's great. Yeah, that is awesome. We've got a couple of questions around motivation. So Rob G301 writes, 
wants to know what is it that motivates you to train hard almost every day. And then I guess in a similar vein, Harmon Libby says, how do you keep training with no goal or race to aim for? Yes, you know, this was very difficult and it took me a while to figure it out because I was like, I've always had a race, you know, right there and I'm going to go for it. Do, 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 do. But um, what I've actually found is because I'm not going anywhere for the first time in my life for the foreseeable future, I've got a routine that I can just stick to because nothing's changing. Um, and so I've just settled into that routine and I'm really enjoying enjoying it. So in terms of staying motivated, training is my job, so you just have to do it. But to do it to the best of your ability, you need to know why you're doing it. And so obviously that why has always been to win a race. But then I was like, okay, well, it needs to be more than that now because you don't know when you're going to win a race. So in times when it's like, I don't really want to do this, well, you want to win a race, it's like, well, when is that? You know, you need another reason. So really it's just because I want to better myself. You know, come back to that. I go, oh, hold on, actually, I, I can be better. So by being better, that's by doing, doing my training because that makes me better, not just as an athlete but as a human as well because then I'm fitter. You know, it's just like relating it back to just simple things. Um, and I think it, for people it's finding out what your real why is so that when you're in those times when it's a little bit more difficult you're like no no this is this is why I'm doing it and this is why it's important and this, these are the reasons that it will be good that I do this as a you know this is the result will be good because of this you know or it feels good when I'm doing that or if it doesn't feel good it feels good afterwards you know what I mean so that's been really interesting to have the time and space to think about those things and I've got various different books I've been reading and studying and stuff to just try and learn about all this this other stuff because you're just constantly trying to get the best out of yourself so the motivation thing's been really interesting to learn about yeah are you are you a numbers kind of person then to see that like self-improvement do you need to look at like oh, I've been able to do this run faster or squat heavier or whatever or are you just happy to kind of feel that progress a bit both really i think we um you know when i'm in in my training i'm in deep and so the times aren't necessarily improving but once we come off of that you know as i sort of tapered down towards the races i was going i knew i was going well you know i was doing doing my, i've got interval intervals that i do in distance rather than in you know time because then you can see each week where you're at and they were I was just flying through them so I knew I had form and stuff like that and that's when you see it but when you're in deep you can't really so I just kind of go keep my head down until I get that chance to see that but the numbers aren't too big an issue for me I look at them and I see them but um yeah I just I just go as hard when I'm supposed to go hard I go hard when I go easy I go easy and that's it <laughs> pretty much Fair enough. not gonna argue with that yeah. So Molly, Molly McGowan wants to know, what does a day's training involve and how long do you train for each day? Yeah, so that varies each each day. So I've got two key sessions a week, which are um, higher intensity, uh, focus on different, different things. And then I've got two gym sessions and running sessions. And then and they're, they're not too long at the moment because I'm trying to build it up um, because I get shin splints because it's of the concrete here. Um, so we're just building that back into the program because I really, I really enjoy running. It mixes it up for me as well. And then at the weekend, I'll be doing some longer rides. So they'll, they'll move up each week. So it goes, you know, anywhere from two and a half to four and a half hours, kind of thing. So, yeah. And Monday's my rest day, and it kind of follows that routine pretty much every week. Um, and it just gets adjusted as we build, and then have an easier week, and then build again, kind of thing. So, yeah. So you still doesn't need <laughs> sorry yeah. you, do you still look to build then over this period where we, we we kind of don't know when we're going racing are you still training like as hard or have you backed it off a bit oh we definitely backed it off a bit yeah because it's you just we just don't know when we're aiming for really so we're kind of we've backed it off because obviously you'd build 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 until the start of the season and then you start coming down and then I was supposed to race, but it was like, okay, we just need to come off the top of all of this and get to a point. And then we'll just start cruising on back up there. Um, because really the reality is once we know we're racing, it's not going to be like, okay, we're going to race next week. We're going to have, you know, a couple of months knowing that we're going to be racing. 
you know, three months' time. Okay, sweet. And then that's enough time for us just to pick that up again and and crack on. So we're just kind of keeping things ticking over at the moment. Yeah. Do you miss that? It's in, still hard. <laughs> yeah. Do you, do you miss that intensity in the program though? Having that, you know, the really hard, high end kind of stuff that. Oh, that's definitely still in there. Okay. That's definitely still in there. It's just in terms of I'm not doing the volume right. of that. So the hard stuff's still there. It's just not huge loads of it kind of thing. So, yes, the program's still complete. Um, it's just a little bit, little bit lower. Okay. Um, so, kind of just starting from the beginning again. But instead of starting where I was, I'm just putting out better times at the moment. Yeah. Because I'm fitter. So just start again. Kind of All good. Yeah, yeah, good stuff. Mm-hmm. The Carrot Cruncher, which is a pretty good Instagram name, wants to know, that is a great name. <laughs> does your head injury still worry you at all? That's a good question. Um, not anymore, but it did for quite a long time. Um, I actually raced in um, where was I? Cable Bay in, up near Nelson in New Zealand this year, and that was kind of felt like it was the closing of that chapter. It was like, okay... You know, I absolutely smashed that race, which was amazing. And just didn't, wasn't thinking about my head or anything like that. Just fully felt like I'm fit again. My brain is working properly again. And I can just lay down, you know, my absolute best, like my actual absolute best. So it's like, okay, sweet. We, we're we back. We've got something we can actually work. We've got a solid base now. Like before it was just all crumbly and just not 100%. And now I was like, oh, sweet. So yeah, now I don't worry about it at all, but for a long time it was hard. It was really, really hard just thinking, like, oh, don't want to crash or I'm not actually quite right yet. So, yeah, definitely glad to see the end of that. Yeah, that's good to hear because you definitely definitely suffered with that one. So, yeah, yeah. good to hear that. This, this is an interesting question. This came in from Marlolo on uh, social media. He wants to know about sources of income for professional riders and the sort of percentage that comes from those different sources. So without, I guess, disclosing mm. the figures, like does all your income come from Trek factory racing as the team or did, are there kind of other sponsors that or other areas that bring in money for you? At the moment, yeah, it's just Trek factory racing. So they're kind of like, they're the, the team and then they've got all these people feeding into that team which then feeds into us as the riders and we get our salary and whatever else um but yeah you can do it in that way where you you are yourself and then you go okay i can get you know just tier your sponsors so you got your sort of main sponsor or sponsors and they put in the most money and they tear it off like that and you can have you can just basically make it a bit of a business working with all these different people who are putting money into the project which is you as the athlete and then you can move forward so yeah there's a few different ways of doing it the the advantage of the the team is you know they're taking care of all that stuff and so we can just get doing our job because when you're doing it yourself it is a lot of work to stay on, you know to stay on top of all of these different sponsors but then at the same time you've got a bit more freedom in terms of your choice of who you work with and who you don't work with so yeah, it's, there's pros and cons to them both, for sure. But there's, it's not like being on a team is not the only way that you can do it, which is really cool. Yeah, definitely. So here's here's one, and this is a purely selfish question, and I'd like if people are watching and they've got thoughts on this, then put your thoughts in the comments. Who else do you think we should get on uh, on Downtime Live? Oh, yeah, good question. Um... There's, a, there's just everyone, all of the people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think who would be interested. You should definitely get Tracy Mosley on. Okay. She'd be interested as well. Uh, I'm trying to think. There's so many good riders. That, I mean, Loic is awesome. Yeah. He's always good to hear from. Um, I'm trying to think who's got the story. Oh, there's so many people, and I'm on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> Brain's, not, Brain's not filling me with anybody. Pedro Burns. Pedro okay. is great as well. My other teammate. He's just an absolute sweetheart and he's just a total legend. He's so young and is just conquering the world at the moment, which is awesome. Oh, so yeah. he'd be cool. Yeah, you have to put us in touch. That would be, uh, be yeah, good. Yeah. Not, not spoken to him. Nice one. Mm-hmm. All right, Definitely. this was a good one that came in again on social from, uh, from Cleric. If you were a team manager, who would you like to have on your team 
And also, as a little side question, how do you like your porridge? So, right, okay, we'll start with the porridge. The porridge varies, actually, because when I was young, my grandpa used to make us porridge with water and salt. Oh. And, uh, oh, it was so good. Really? It was so good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I'm ever around and it's breakfast time and I'm like, oh, Grandpa, can you make me some porridge? <laughs> he makes it really well. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to have it like that. And then otherwise, I just have some sort of other milk that's not dairy. Um, and then cinnamon, I used to like putting in banana through that as well, you know, heating the banana up in it. A bit of cinnamon, a bit of honey, an array of seeds and nuts. Fancy. So, yeah, that's how I'd have a porridge. Um, <laughs> What was, the, what was the actual main question? If, my team if you were a team manager, yeah, yeah. Like, who would you have on your team? So I guess this mm. is like you're putting together your dream team for the season. For um for enduro, well, I'd have Sam Hill, yeah, and then I'd have Adrian Daly, and I'd have Flo, and I'd have Pedro because I need to have all my teammates as well. <laughs> um, and who else would I have? What girls would I have? I'd have Isabel and I'd have me and I'd have Hattie. <laughs> so that's a big team. <laughs> yeah, that is a big team. I hope you've got plenty of sponsors to pay for that lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because we're going to win. <laughs> <laughs> you would with that crew. That would be good. Oh, would, yeah, it'd yeah. be great. Yeah. Happy days. <laughs> well, all right, let's, uh, let's get into some Scotland-based questions then. Oh, yes. Cat Oaks. Do you think Scotland should host another round of the EWS? I think they are next year, aren't they? Yes, you're in luck. It's happening next May. I think it's May. Yep, next May we'll be back, which is very exciting. So, yes. Yeah, yeah I can't wait for that. That That's must be year. really cool, right. like racing in, in your hometown, effectively. Yeah, but it will be. Yes. Very, very cool. Very, very cool. Because everybody's mad about bikes there, so... When you've got a community like that, they all come out and watch the race and get fully behind it. So it's, and when you're one of the local riders as well, it's oh man, it just feels like nothing else in the world. So and now that enduro is even bigger than it was when we initially came, it's just wow. Yeah, it's going to be a big one. Yeah, it's a good few years since the last one, isn't it? Yeah, twenty fifteen. Okay. It's the last one. And yeah, the trail network in the yeah. valleys come on a lot as well. So you've got a lot more, mm. not more to choose from, I suppose, for the organisers. Yeah, we do. <laughs> amazing. Yeah, absolute bangers. So yeah, it's very, very exciting. Well, that yeah, that leads us on to a question from Reese one one three five. What is your favourite trail in the valley? Lever damage. I knew you were going to say that. It's pretty. <laughs> yeah, it's, just... it's pretty hardcore. Yeah, 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 I love it. That's actually the one that figured out the the 29er on. Okay. Um, yeah, well, it's just got everything. It's a little bit niggly at the start. You've got a couple of wee jumps in there, and then it gets a wee bit fast, and then it gets real slow and tight and steep, and then you've got a bit of a scree, terrifying scree shoot, and then and then it's over. Oh, it's great. <laughs> love it. <laughs> what other, are there another couple of trails that you'd recommend in the valley if people are heading up there? Um. Well, you have to do, um, oh, wait, 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 let me just scroll through my brain a lot a second, because there's so many good ones. Um, Repeat Offender is just an all-time classic, and I absolutely love doing full runs of that, just all the way down. Yeah. It's the most um, half squats and press-ups you'll ever do in your life, but it's great. And <laughs> um, well, there's some good stuff over the inner Lethan side um, as well. You just have to write the whole thing. But the Wolves as well. Oh yeah, Wolf of Wall Street. Yeah. Wolf of Wall Street. All of them are good. Um, there's a new one that I can't remember the name of because it's a mixture of names. It's not Jawbone, but it's might be Bojaws. Okay. I don't know. I've got that the right. But anyway, it's um, Jawbone goes like that, and the other one goes all the way across the hill, traverses all the way across and down, and it's very long and a good time. So yeah, that's yeah. also good. So yeah. trail forks is pretty handy if people are going up there as well for and don't know the way around. So yeah, for sure. Check that for out. Sure. Yeah. But you're missing home now, aren't you? <laughs> Do you know what I just really miss is the dirt. I really, really miss the dirt. You know, just absolutely because here it's so hard pack, and then you've got like dust on top, so it's kind of weird, slippery. Yeah. Whereas at home, you can just really push into the the mud, and it moves, but it grips, and it's just oh. I rode, so yeah, I rode up there with Cy from Kotick, uh just the day after the Scottish Mountain Bike Awards in November, yeah. 
and Cathro came up with this as well. And it was perfect. Like Cy Cy calls it hero dirt. When it looks like it's just tacky, yeah. it's like you're riding on Velcro. It's amazing. So much yeah. good. Oh, so good. Yeah. Pretty yep. special. <laughs> yeah, so I will be back to Scotland because you know you can't think about the trails like that and not go back. <laughs> this is true. All right, Ryan Shaw then wants to know best race location ever and best riding location ever. Mm. Well, Whistler kind of fits both of those for me personally because I just love the riding there. And um, Rotorua is another good one both good riding destinations and good rest, race destinations. Do you know, actually, Ireland was probably the best race destination because I've never experienced anything like that. That was just absolutely wild. So many people going crazy all over the hill all day. So to race in front of that, that was, that was amazing. Yeah, that just riding. Was wild. Oh, man, it was so good. But riding, riding for sure, Whistler, it just lives up to the hype. I can't. You just have to go. And then you'll understand. <laughs> Fair play. What this is from Nick Saffs on social media. What's the most technical trail that you've ridden? Mm. Yeah, that's also a good question. There's quite a, there's quite a few. Probably I rode a, a foothill out here actually called Mount Thomas, and I came in too hot, and it was like you know, soap rock that's just the limestone and um, had too much speed, couldn't scrap the speed, flipped over the bars and gave myself a dead leg. So I didn't see any more of that track. But from what I saw there, I was like, oh, my goodness, this is insane. Absolutely insane. And actually, as well, the Cable Bay Enduro was some of the most technical riding I've ridden in a very long time. Just full on intense the whole time, like roots everywhere really lovely dirt but like roots everywhere you're constantly moving twist and turning and it was it's all like hand built by the community and nice. so like you know a, a truck's not come in there and taken it out it's like some people have just wiggled it around and so it's well that's really really good pretty special so i'm yeah. being reliably informed by anya tolowinska that the new trail is called big Bore. thank you Thanks. There you go. <laughs> I mean, Parody, Mojo sounds much better. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's a here's a controversial one from Muddy Tracks: e-bike or no e-bike? Oh, I would definitely like an e-bike for sure. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, what's what's bad about doing more trails in less time, guys? Yeah. And you can still work just as hard. You still go just as hard. You just go faster and further. Yeah, I've still not had a proper go. I had a play on a friend in his garden, and it was enough yeah. to get me quite excited um, yeah, nice. they're stupidly quick so yeah i would like to have a go and see what it's like on a trail yeah yeah yeah. Mm. oh yeah that's good stuff that's good stuff yeah all right let's dig into some of these last few questions uh adam janowski wants to know why do most pro enduro riders seem to wear downhill helmets and not enduro specific full faces well personally it's because um i just want as much protection as possible for this little noggin at the moment. Um, I can't really answer for anybody else at the moment um, because I don't know what their reasons are. But I feel like we're pushing pretty hard when we're racing. Yeah. You know, I think if I was just out riding around, I wouldn't mind wearing the lighter one. Um, but for sure, when it's when we're we're racing hard and racing fast, you, you want the downhill stuff. You know, Mar Maze is right up there on the World Cup level. It's going relatively similar in the, in the enduro, you know, speed-wise. So we're pushing hard. Yeah, fair play. All right, a few final questions. John Vogel says, serious question, is Miss Winton the voice of the Gruffalo's child? <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm not. Worth checking? <laughs> Oh, wow. All right. We need to check that out now. <laughs> yeah. Ryan Shaw would like to know what your favourite ice cream is. Chocolate. Yeah. Straight chocolate. Chocolate chip? Just, no, it doesn't need, doesn't need the chips in it. I just like chocolate ice cream. Um, we got a voucher. We did a gravity um, in Canterbury Enduro here, and they do, like, spot prizes at the end. And um, they... We got a voucher basically, Gelato Lab, 
best chocolate ice cream, I don't know if it's gelato or whatever, but oh my god. And I've had a lot of chocolate ice cream, and it was incredible. Pretty special. Very passionate about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, one more here from uh, John Lowe. What do you think of mass start races? Um, well, I used to race cross country, so I'm all about a mass start. But in terms of like the mega avalanche and stuff like that, as a female, it's quite okay because we're all we're not too aggressive. But I know the guys just go out to kill each other, so it's a different ball game altogether. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I love a mass start just because I like racing head to head. Yeah, good bit of adrenaline. Anya Tolwinska mm-hmm. wants to know, do you run DH casing tyres during races? Um, at certain ones, yep. I've got a downhill one on the front at all times at the moment, just because it's uh, kind of our best tyre, but I want a faster roll and one on the back. But Yeah, most of the time I am now. Yeah, all right. And let's finish up with this one. Adam Wilson, what's your favourite movie and favourite movie snacks, please? Adam Wilson. I wonder if that's my friend from school. It could be another Adam Wilson. Favourite movie? Well, actually, I've just watched the, all the Bourne films. Nice. And, yeah, they're pretty much up there. It's my favourite movie. And the favourite movie snack is I like sweet popcorn. <laughs> so you like so salty porridge and sweet popcorn? Yeah. <laughs> Get ahead around that. <laughs> that's blown my mind Katie. <laughs> yeah. oh hang on one more Lee Semple do you own a gravel bike no I don't actually no not yet I, I'm no. borrowing one at the minute from Marin and it's actually really good fun is it yeah. is it actually yeah it's perfect for around here because there's no like decent trails without driving to somewhere mm-hmm. which we're not allowed to do so yeah mm-hmm. it means I can get out and ride reasonable trails that are actually more interesting when you're on a bike with no suspension basically it's good yeah 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 for sure oh yeah. that's cool my dad was pretty keen to try and get a gravel bike but yeah i haven't i haven't thought about it yet it's basically I like like, it's like it's like a 90s mountain bike but without all the rubbish bits like it's got proper brakes nice. and decent tires and but it's like it's rattly and hard work and fun in a different way at a much slower Sick. speed which is good for now yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that'd be cool. Yeah. You can razz around fire roads and everything. Exactly. And go miles. Yeah. Mm. Happy days. One, one for the future. I'll add that to the collection <laughs> at some point. <laughs> Sweet. All right, Katie. Okay. Well, it's uh, very early in the morning for you. And I know you've not had any breakfast yet. So um, we should say thank you very much for your time. Uh, and yeah, for answering all these questions from everyone. I hope people have enjoyed watching. And yeah, we wish you all the best for whatever the rest of this 2020 season turns out to be but yeah stay safe look after yourself and yeah enjoy new zealand while you're there thank you thanks very much and thanks everybody for watching cool. appreciate it all right well let's wrap this thing up if you've been with us live today then thanks i hope you enjoyed it thanks for all the questions there's some super good ones in there and um, don't forget to subscribe to the youtube channel so you can get all of these live episodes when they when they come out Check out the audio version of the podcast at downtimepodcast.com. There's loads of episodes there to have a go at. And yeah, give us a subscribe or follow on social media where we're at Downtime Podcast on Instagram or Facebook. And that's about it, I think. Thanks to Katie for her time, for getting up super early. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. All right. Cheers.